Here's a popular statics problem. You have a board on two scales, and you have a mass on the board, and you ask yourself, what do the scales read as you move the mass around? How does the weight get distributed between the two scales? So let's start by drawing it. So we've got our board here, and it's sitting on a scale here, and it's sitting on a scale here. And then you got the mass up here. So let's call, let's give the board mass a little m and the weight, the big heavy weight mass big M. And this is uh, the left scale and this is the right scale. And let's put it on an axis, on the x-axis with one end, and the end will just say we're the scale and the end of the board, it's all sort of one place. So I'll, I'll put it like right here. One end is at the origin, the other end is at L. And now we just treat it like a statics problem. So let's do this for, uh, let's do a free body diagram for the board. We're really going to think about uh, the board itself. So a free body diagram of the board. Well, we know it has its own weight, right? We know that it has a little mg always right at its uh, center of mass, which for a uniform board is in the center. We know the way a scale works is the board pushes on the scale and the scale pushes on the board is an action reaction force. Uh, the scale reads that uh, push force, but it also pushes back with the same force. So whatever the scale reads, it's also being pushed up, and I'll call it a normal force um, to the, from the left scale, and there's a normal force from the right scale. And those are the two we're curious if they're going to change as we move the weight around. And then the weight, the mass, sits somewhere, big M, and uh, it applies a force to the board big M G, wherever it's sitting. So it can move around to different positions along the x-axis. So that's the setup. So now we're going to do statics. We only really care about one direction uh, for translation, and that's that the sum of the forces and the y, meaning up and down, are 0, because it's not moving in the y. So for that, that equation is pretty straightforward. You have the normal force left is up plus the normal force right is up, minus the mg is down for the, the board, minus big mg is down for the weight. And those all sum to zero, and nothing changes as you move the mass around. It doesn't really matter. If this moves left and right, it doesn't matter for the force. But we also care about the torque. We know it's not rotating, so we know the sum of the torques around any axis you want to pick is zero, and we're going, to do, we're going to do the torque around the origin. So around here, we're going to torque this thing around, right around one side. All right, so let's see, what are all the torques we could think about? Well, the normal force on the left is at the point of rotation, so that one is zero. I'll go ahead and write it down. Zero for that force. Uh, the force on the right, the normal force on the right does create a torque. And uh, it is positive because it's counterclockwise. And it's being applied perpendicular to the length of the board, which is along this axis. So it's just nr times l. So I think the order I wrote that was, yeah, nr times l. OK. And then the two mg forces. Let's see, the weight of the board is applied in the center. So that's at l over 2. And it's negative because it's trying to turn it counterclockwise. So minus. L over 2, little mg. And then the one that gives us a variable here is the big mass. It's uh, big mg is at a position x. It's a distance x from the point of rotation from the origin. Also trying to make it go counterclockwise. So it's uh, minus x big mg. All right, And those are going to be equal to 0. It's not rotating, so there can be no net torque. All right, so the question was, what do the two scales read? So all we've got to do is solve for uh, the right normal force and the left normal force. So actually, the torque by itself, since we put the rotation axis here, NL doesn't show up. We only have the right normal force. We can actually get the first answer just by solving this. Right, so the whole thing is right here. If we take these two terms over to that side and divide through by an L, then we've got the right normal force, and therefore the reading of the right scale. And let's see. It must be uh, one half little mg 
because that L canceled that L, uh, plus X over L big MG. So let's think about that one for a second. What does that mean? That means that the right scale always registers half the weight of the board. And that makes sense, because as you move the big mass around the board, nothing changes about the board. The board's uh, gravitational force is always dead center between the two scales. So yeah, they're probably going to share in that part of the weight. But its reading due to the big mass uh, does vary. So if x equals 0, if it's all the way over here, then you get no contribution to the right scale. If it's all the way over here, then L over L is 1, and the entire weight of the right scale includes big MG. OK, so let's solve then for in L. Let's see. So in L, or I'm sorry, the, the left one, in L, yeah. it equals, uh, let's see, uh, the negative of NR. Let's see, so minus 1 half mg minus x over L big mg uh, plus little mg plus big mg plus mg plus mg. All right, so you can see what that turns into is this and this give you 1 half mg again. Well, that makes sense because we said the two scales probably share the mass or the weight of the, little, of the board. And then these become, let's see, uh, 1 minus x over L, big MG. And that's the left scale reading. And that actually makes perfect sense. They share the mass, uh, they share the weight of the little of the board, and for the big mass, now instead of x over L, we have 1 minus x over L. So if it's all the way over here, x over L is 0, and it's just big MG. So if it's all the way over here, the left scale reads big M. If it's at the other side, L over L, 1 minus 1 is 0, and the right scale has all the reading. So it implies that the, the, they share the force, and it's just linear with position as you move it back and forth. So now we're going to see if that is true. Um, we are going to now read the scales and move this mass around left and right. But actually, this is kind of boring. I mean, it's only 8 kilograms, 16 pounds. I think we can do better than this. I think I should get on. Let me get on the board myself. I think that'll make it a little more exciting. All right, so I'm going to get on over on this side. Here we go. And you can see the reading on the scale. It looks like it's about 100, 170 pounds. So the board's really heavy. It's the finest mahogany. But what I'm going to do now, so you have about 170 here, and there's probably some reading over there due to the board, not quite zero. So now I'm going to start moving over. Here we go. If I go part way over, now that one's gone up a little bit, and the left scale's gone down a little bit because I'm farther away from it. And now let me get right in the middle. And I think if I get right in the middle, they're both going to say about 85 pounds. Close. And now as I move closer to this side, it's going to get closer to 170 on the right and go less and less on the left. Let's go a little farther over, almost all the way. And now I'll go all the way over. And 170 on this side. It all works. The moving load. <laughs> 